Okay, so I cleaned up the workbench a bit, so we have some space here. And now, you remember this flow motor? Um, that's the good one. Then we have another one. That's the bad one. Not bad because it is uh, tremendously broken. I think it also is just the bearing. But, <coughs> oh, here's the motor, whatever. Um, but you see this. This is the motor control board. This has an awful lot of ICs for a motor control board. Power in, 230 volts, or, well, mains voltage. And then you have a control port. And I have no fucking idea uh, what the control port does. <coughs> um, I guess there's one ground connection. And I don't know what the other four are. Because we have a opto isolated opto isolation between those two. So no idea. So one of it could be a, a speed output pin. Then we have, I don't know, three that are left. And I don't know what they're doing. An enable pin, maybe? So two left. For the control? I don't know. So, <clears throat> and I cannot really infer how it works. Now, I know these four are doing the motor switching. The motor is just, um, has only two contacts. Like, I don't know how it works, but apparently it does. <laughs> um, and just applying voltage to it does not make it turn. It just stays in one location, so kind of expected that. So it's probably a sine wave um, flipping up and down the voltage. And that somehow makes that motor move. So in the worst case, I can uh, switch it by myself using a microcontroller with an H-bridge. Um, but yeah, this thing obviously takes a lot of power. This switches directly 400 volts, or about 340 from this capacitor here. 400 volts, 47 microfarads is right next to the cap, so I guess there's a high voltage up here. Also, it goes probably through that uh, thing here, what do you call it, uh, rectifier, so that's a choke, I guess that's a snubber network, I don't know what this cap does here, and because it has a different voltage, a lower voltage, and I guess that's a voltage regulator maybe, although it could be that like there's a, uh, what is that? Well, that's a fuse, a polyfuse, I guess. Then this is, I don't know what that is, inductor, maybe? So, whatever, they somehow get a low voltage out of it for the control circuitry, which there is a lot of. Also, it's conformally coded, so it's hard to see the, the numbers of the chips. <coughs> At least I think it is. Yeah, the parts up here are conformally coded. Not as much as I expected it to be. Why are those... MOSFETs coded and the capacitor isn't. Oh well. <coughs> anyway, that's a problem. That's why I don't like these blower motors usually because they have this control circuitry. There's no documentation. Because EBM Pabst, which is the company uh, trading those blower motors for all kinds of um, uh, central heatings and heating stuff, everything that needs a blower has an EBM Pabst blower. They don't give out any data sheets. Nothing. Because they're an old German company and old German companies don't do that. They are apparently afraid that someone would steal their intellectual property uh, if they release some data sheets for it. You have to call them or write an email as a company with all kinds of info for them to even talk to you. Uh, I fucking hate it. I fucking hate companies that don't give off the information and you can't find anything because no one has bothered with these because they are relatively local to well Germany so no one bothers reverse engineering this and releasing stuff anyway so that's one new motor next new motor back here now this is an induction motor you can just plug it in has a comes with a start cap and the bearing up here is well, no wait, that's, that's the, is that the good bearing? Yeah, that's the good bearing up here. 
as you see that's the good one <clears throat> so let's put that here I can't get the piece of the back here off and and I can't get this thing off no oh here's the bearing doesn't turn that well I mean doesn't make much noise anymore but I think there was something in there at some point I'll just put it here can you see this yes you can let's see well it still seems okay but I still want to get it off so I um, ordered a bearing puller now this thing has a brake this is a brake and I don't know how it works that's why I want to get the bearing off so I can take a look at it there's like a spring under it but I hope that with speed it gets retracted um, and the housing back here has some brake pads under here that apply here on the brake whenever the motor stops so that should work I didn't plug it in <laughs> should have maybe done that but yeah I would have to fix it to something um, I think this is almost a thousand watt does it say anything on here no probably on the other side but anyway I ordered a bearing puller to get this bearing off I also dinged it with a screwdriver here but it is kind of fine now like it doesn't stick or anything also doesn't make a noise anymore it did make a noise when I got the motor so either whatever was in there is now out of it or it just has fallen in the back of the bearing so maybe I will have to replace this but at the moment it still feels rather solid so I'm not gonna order a new one till I really have it running and see what happens I'm probably gonna use this motor maybe for a uh, bandsaw that I'm gonna build if I'm gonna build it but I don't even know where I should put it there's so much stuff here <clears throat> but a bandsaw is something that I really need at some points just as a bearing puller which is why I ordered one um, and new bearings for the other motors so I will replace those now reassemble them and then we'll see if this thing back here works and if I can ever get this thing to work now while I'm in the process of reassembling this <coughs> um, I also hate these fa fans because uh, this thing is pressed on you see there's like a rough end with plastics plastic stuck to it um, and that is where this goes so I have to press that on there to stay so till the axle comes out of the top and yeah getting that off was hard I had to heat it with my uh, heater thing I guess you can hear from the way I touch it it sounds different than the outside so I got a bit carbonized in the process but I had to make it hot so I could get it off um, I just held the back in my hand and turned this and then finally got it off but that's something you can't do many times till the plastic completely wears out or you have to stick something else in there or glue it um, so yeah let's just hope this works on the first try I noticed that the second bearing in there also makes a noise it's not really audible now but it's not as bad as the other one but <laughs> There is a second bearing there. The problem, those bearings are shut in by um, a piece of metal, like a, a washer that's holding them down and it's pressed into the case too, so getting them out is really hard. Um, so I hope I don't have to do that. But yeah, I'm going to reassemble this one and then the next one would be the initial one. Now, got it fixed, put together and apparently don't even have to do anything we just have to switch on power that's quite powerful I know I don't really have anything that I sh can show for but over here this thing moves so yeah It works and the speed is voltage dependent apparently I guess the control input could control it but much easier for me to just um, turn up the, the voltage or down for that matter I 
thoughts. Ten. Start at ten volts. <laughs> Now I have a blower. Amazing. So the only thing that was defective were the two bearings in here. I mean, I kind of... They're still kind of turning now because I put WD-40 on it. So they're just a bit rough. But yeah, it works. Now, next step would be to figure out how to get this thing working. I... I pretty much know that these don't just start turning uh, because we have a similar one in one of our central heatings and it just doesn't start turning immediately it just sits there I don't know maybe <clears throat> it reacts differently if no control input is applied but I doubt it and a uh, bearing puller for this thing which will maybe come tomorrow so I can do that then yay we got something fixed and I only got a few scratches here and cut a piece of my finger off <laughs> yeah that that happened when I got my finger in between this thing and this thing when I closed it and it cut my piece of finger right off <laughs> so yeah um, but other than that it went quite okay also, I, the thing that I saw it in here, so that still works too. Also nice. Okay, so that wraps up this part. Um, we got one fixed, the other one at least assembled, and well, we still have to figure out how to drive it. If the electronics even work, <laughs> who knows? Maybe that was all for nothing. Um, and the bearing puller, which comes tomorrow. So, bye!